the jungle was a, a set that was required. And obviously there's jungle in Puerto Rico, which is one of the reasons we were there. Um, and, you know, it's about finding the right piece of jungle that works for the film, that we can get access to it, because there's no point in finding a piece that's at the top of the hill that it takes you two days to get there. Um, but once you find the right place, and that to me is, is the key thing. If you find the right location, then that answers a lot of other questions for you. You know, when you look at the final film, that all happens in the one day. If, you, if anybody cares to look at the weather during that one day, it changes drastically through the day. So my job is not about um, waiting till everything is either sunny or everything is overcast. It's about knowing that that's good enough to get away with because if we don't shoot it now, we lose the shot. Now, I think, um, you know, I can see inconsistencies, inconsistencies in some of the weather, but I don't think if you're in the story, anybody, anybody's paying attention to it. The first approach, shaking the camera and leaving a, a fuselage of the aircraft on the ground, nobody would believe any of that. Why would anybody choose to do something that is never going to be believed by anybody? So that's not ne that's never an option. So th the gimbal was always, to me, the only way you could do this stuff. Um, there's things happening with the gimbal too that, again, no disrespect to any actor, but you know if you're faking movement, it's a lot different than when it happens to you and you don't know that it's going to happen. You react differently, and it makes it much easier for actors, I think, to give a believable performance because they're physically being shaken. Some of the shots, I had to do one running backwards from the end of the aircraft into the cockpit, running backwards, handheld, with the mercenaries charging full blast at me. And um, I hit a lot of seats like that because it was mo like that. <laughs> that's not something. But it brings with it the realness that that you do believe. and. You know, sometimes when the aircraft moves, it knocks the camera where a place you might necessarily want it to go. But as long as you're still on the set, that's that looks real because that's what would happen too. So it brings a realness with it that for some people, I think it's hard to, even with the best operators in the world, it's hard to fake that realness. There's some stuff you can do, but sometimes it's worth just do it for real. That fight, which I think works really well, that's one take about a two minute long take where we didn't use a stunt person. It was, uh, it was Jerry doing everything. Now physically to do a two minute stunt scene, if you're not a been serious training, that's tough. Just physically going, it's tough for him and it's tough for Eric, the camera operator. But myself and Jean-Francois felt that oh, that scene would be amazing if we could do it as a one take thing um, because you can get tired of just seeing every action scene where the actor's been replaced for the, the difficult bit or the dangerous bit. That to me was interesting, but Jerry, I wouldn't be surprised if Jerry was a little hesitant at first about that because it's not a usual thing to get the main star to do the, the scene, but he saw that it was possible and that it could be really good for the film.